The lava lake in the K1 crater volcano of the Swarsing volcanic system in the Reckonus Peninsula of Iceland is filling up and draining all the time. This is an interesting uh, a phenomenon we saw right now, and you can see bubbling of the lava. It just reminds me when you empty a bottle horizontally, a bottle of water or drink, and then air goes in and the gulps of the you know liquid oozes out. But what is interesting is that the moment the drained um, lava leaves the lake, what will happen is you have a collapse on one side, the uh, the far side of this uh, lava lake. The support that was holding these uh, uh, walls was removed. This is practically the weight of the, the mass of the lava holding these walls together. It's like when you see a volcano finished and you can see that they crumble because the, uh, the force of the magma, remember this is a density of co concrete, it'll be even denser, three. And uh, the moment that uh, magma or lava is removed from the volcanic system, they collapse under their own weight. You can see it here. And a tiny one also appears to the near side of it. You can see it here now. This is practically like what we have in the architecture as buttress. And the buttress is something that holds the wall. In the past, before using beams and concrete and, you know, bars, rebars and all, all the things inside the uh, architectural buildings, putting a wall was a difficult and risky business, especially if you want to have a roof on it. So we had to have these long supports, long arms. You can see them around the old churches, even as ornamental things, they use them to support the wall the weight of the wall when the roof comes on top of it this lava works like that i have a video from the past eruptions uh, in the little quarter which shows also this arch architectural importance in that why crater walls collapse in the little quarter volcano the volcano up to now was in a state of the equilibrium last night we had a significant increase in the eruption rate the forces within up to that point from the lava pushing out and from the wall pushing back were equal. But last night, this balance was turned and the inside forces were more than outside. So practically, it was trying to burst and turn the wall. The difference between these two forces created a torque or force which actually was able to turn the wall of the volcano on that side. When it turned for a point, it Gravity was added to that also, and the gravity pulled it down, added to that force, created a bigger force, and its whole wall rotated in this way. And the collapse happened after that. The gaps opened, and the lava oozed out, like a big cauldron of the molten uh, metal in a you know smelting factory. Uh, then what we had was this uh, slump also after that, which uh, drove down the top part of those walls. So gravity again came and a slump happened inside, the, toward the inside of the crater. Another cause for the pushing out of the lava. And the lava in that part was not having been supported by any of these overflows that we had over the last few days. These overflows were on this wall that is facing us and this practically help to hold the wall together. I'll show you the uh, track of the, the tracing this long, uh, the actual overflows, holding that wall together, forcing it back. So this is the wall which is stayed intact. It's like buttresses in the Gothic church. We had it before, of course, in the Babylonian uh, style architecture and elsewhere. But these buttresses were the way to hold the roof and the walls from collapsing in the ancient architecture because the weight of the wall and the roof was not supported by itself. So practically you had to support it by something pushing back the wall. In this case, we didn't have it on that part of the wall, the wall collapsed. The part which is standing upright, yet it is the wall that had the support of a buttress by the overspills.